Hey guys, thanks for joining us to learn to play games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Halls of Horror. This is a new game by Draw Distance, and they this is their first Kickstarter for a board game, but they have been working in the video game industry for about 10 years as an indie game developer. So in the game itself, this is a two to four player game that takes roughly an hour to an hour and a half to play, and it is a competitive game, so each player is working against the other players to collect the keys and be the first to make it out of the mansion alive. In the game itself, each player is going to be playing a character that has been captured by unknown reasons and brought to this mansion, and they wake up and they find that they are in this, this location that is locked down, and they're moving through the rooms trying to find different gears and items and things that they can use, and, and ultimately trying to find a pair of keys that they can make it to an exit location and make it out of the mansion the first alive. Now to stop them in this is the other players moving around as well, obviously trying to find those same keys. So as players collect keys, players may decide that it's not worth looking for keys and just simply go and hunt the other players. And on top of that, there's a killer that's let loose in the house as well that is moving around trying to eliminate the players. So all this is going on. The players are trying to locate those keys and be the first out of the mansion to be the overall winner of the game. So my opinions on this one, I had a good time learning this one and it definitely it takes me back to movies like The Saw and some of the other ones from the 90s that, that definitely have that feel to them. There isn't a lot of like mass murder in this one as far as that kind of stuff's concerned so it doesn't completely follow this, like Saw and those other movies but it, it basically gives you that same kind of feeling where you've been trapped and, and held into this location and you're moving around trying to solve puzzles and different things to make it out of the house alive. And like I said, this is a competitive game, so there, it's definitely interesting in, in weighing out whether it's it's more beneficial to go after and hunt the other players or try to, to stay away from them and, and find those keys yourself. So definitely a very interesting game. Definitely recommend checking it out. And the artwork to this one is really neat too. It definitely gives you that, that kind of horror feel uh, with the psychedelic kind of thing going on where you're not really quite sure what, what's going on and where you're at and all that. So definitely kind of sets that mood for that as well. And like I said, then there is also that component of the killer moving around that is controlled by each player that is the first player during the turn. And then when a player gets eliminated from the game, then they'll take on that role and then they'll spend the rest of the game trying to hunt those other players down. So really di interesting dynamic, especially as the game gets to that midpoint and starts shifting where players potentially will die and become the uh, master of ceremony and be able to try to hunt down those other players as well. So really interesting dynamics within that. Uh, so definitely recommend checking this one out. Of course, these are just my opinions. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in, in the comments down below as well. Let me know if this is one you're looking to back or are interested in backing. And the other thing I want to let you guys know about moving into the video, this is all prototype stuff. And some of this is stuff is, is kind of rough prototype stuff. So some of the artwork, some of the different features, the tokens and all that will change in the production as well. Uh, a lot of this will be cleaned up and, and made really well for the production. So take that into mind when you guys are looking at this and checking out this video. Pay attention to the gameplay more than necessarily the components as some of those will change. Now, some of this stuff is final, so keep that in mind. But also let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this. Is this something that you're interested in and that you're looking to play? And as always, if you enjoy these videos, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel as it really does help me to continue to grow and be able to bring these games to you guys. So let's head to the table and I'll show you what this is all about. Let's go ahead and start off by taking a look at the players. So at the beginning of the game, each player is going to choose the character they want to play as, or they can be dealt out randomly. And there are going to be four different characters included in the game. Each character is going to have a name and their health on there, which each character will start with 10 health. And on the back side of each character card is also going to be a the alternate version of that character where you can play and each character will have its own unique special powers. So from there, let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the stuff the character will get. You will have a quick reference guide for your turn, a health marker to mark your health, which each character will start with 10, four combat dice, and then the two combat cards, which are combat escape and attack, and then finally their action cards, which are move up, move down, move left, right, and search. The main enemy in the game besides the players themselves against each other is the killer. And the killer is going to be controlled by the first player each round until one of the players is eliminated. The killer is going to start with 1 rage and 10 hit points. 
Then at the end of each round, the player that has the first player marker will flip over the top card of the Master Ceremonies and resolve its effects. And these will range from all kinds of different abilities and different things, as well as a number of sickles with some of the cards having them. Each one of these can be spent to do different actions by the killer, which will allow him to move around the board, one space for each of the sickles you spend. You can use them to move up his rage, where he will do more damage and receive more dice the more rage he gets. You can also use them to heal him back up. And these are outlined on the side of his card as well. The board itself is going to be made up of a number of different room cards that are going to be randomly put out at the beginning of the game. And there's a number of different ones I like to go over with these. There's going to be four starting rooms, which is where the players are going to start. And each of these rooms can be searched and will have different items that you can find in those rooms. Then there'll be puzzle rooms, which will lock behind the player if they're the only one in the room. And then they'll have a number of turns to complete that puzzle room in order to unlock it and get out again. And then potentially receive a reward if they've done well enough. Other rooms that you'll find are different rooms such as this one here that'll have different effects or require certain items to be able to search those rooms. And then finally, the player's our ultimate goal is to collect two keys and then make it to one of the exit rooms and successfully exit from there. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the main features of the game. So throughout the game, the players are going to be entering rooms and trying to search them for different items, whether they're weapons or ammunition or keys or different things. So let me show you how a search action is going to work. So first off, depending upon the type of room you're in, it's going to vary within that. So let's go ahead and start out with a basic search action for Zoe here. So she is in the starting room tile. And so in order to do that, you're going to flip over four reward cards from the rewards deck. From there, then you're going to eliminate any cards that aren't shown on the rewards list there. So our panic card here is going to be eliminated. And then it'll be the card that has a the most of that card. So right now, our, the most we have are the health hit one. And if it is a tie, then it'll go based on the, the symbol that is farthest in the left of the room, working its way over. Now, a player can also spend a resolve token in order to draw two additional cards, and they will also be able to eliminate one of those cards of their choice. So initially, Zoe would have taken one point of damage because that was the highest card, as there was a pair of them, but since she spent a resolve token, she got to draw two new cards and then eliminate one, so we'll get rid of that, that damage card, and then the bullet cards are the highest ones now as a pair. So she would receive one shell, as that is the next reward going to the left, and then we're going to place an exhausted marker on there, as there is a square there, which means that it can only be, only get their reward once. Now if we look at, at a second example here with our puzzle room, with this one you're going to draw four cards from the reward deck, and you're looking for a pair within that. So in this example, we would not have found a pair. So we would mark this first spot as a failure. And then the next turn, we can search again. And in this situation, then we would draw five cards. And again, we're just looking for a pair. It doesn't matter what type. And if we're able to do it, then we would receive a key. But if we fail again, say the next turn, then the final turn, we would be able to draw six and then we would receive a panic as our reward. So not real good, but we would be able to get out of the room at least. Moving over to combat, let me show you an example of that real quick. So poor Ben here has found himself in the same room as the killer. So at the beginning of the turn, he's gonna play a card and so he has to either play an escape or combat card. So then all the cards are going to be revealed, and so he chose to do an escape. As he really doesn't want to face off against the killer, he's going to try to run away. So from there, then we move into the combat itself, and so he's going to roll his four dice for his player, and he's looking for fours, fives, and sixes. So he rolled two, and then the killer will roll based on his rage. So right now the killer's rage is three, or one, so he'll receive three dice, and again he's going to succeed on fours, fives, and sixes. So he got two as well, so our players, our killer and our player have tied, in which case in ties, the killer will succeed. So Ben can choose to spend a resolve if he wants to, to re-roll these other two dice and try to get another success. He failed, and so again, it will go down to the tie. The killer will never be able to re-roll, so this is his result. And the killer always wins for ties, so he is going to do two damage to Ben, and then Ben will receive two points of resolve, one for each damage that he's taken. 
The last thing I want to show you is the game in action. So here's a game that we've been playing for a while, and so I'm going to take you through one of the turns of the players. So first off, each player is going to choose a action that they want to perform for the turn, and they're going to keep that hidden from all their players. And then once all players have chosen an action, they're going to go ahead and flip those over simultaneously and reveal them. Unfortunately, I'm only one person, so I won't be able to do this all in one, at the exact same moment, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we'll go ahead and start with our first player. He's going to go ahead and look through his actions. And Ben is over here, and he's just completed this room. So he's got a couple of rooms that he can go and check out. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and play this card here. And like I said, all the players are going to do this simultaneously. Okay, so now that all our players have made their selection, they're going to reveal them simultaneously. And then starting with the first player, and moving in clockwise order, each player is going to resolve their action. So with Ben being our first player, he's going to resolve first. So he's going to move to the left and reveal a new room. And he found another exit. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have any keys yet, so that's not really going to do him any good. And then we'll move over to the next player in clockwise order, which is Zoe. So with Zoe, she is going to search. And so she is going to do it in that room. She's going to do four cards. And she's looking for a gun, hopefully. Unfortunately, she pulled two damage, so that is her current one. And we're going to drop off the cards that don't count. And so she could choose to spend a resolve to redraw or to draw in two new cards. So she's going to go ahead and do that. She'll spend her resolve and pull out two new ones. And again, she'll discard any that aren't in play and then discard one of the cards that she wanted to. So she's still stuck with one, so she's going to take one damage. She could continue spending resolve if she wanted to, but uh, she's not going to. So she'll take another point of damage, and receive another resolve. Moving over to the next player, she's going to move to the left, and then our final play over here, Ian, is going to move down. And this is a puzzle room, so it'll become locked, since he's the only player in there. And then we would move over to the next step in the turn, which is revealing the Master Ceremony card. So this is a gift from the MC. Draw two gift tokens at random without peeking and place them face down in different empty rooms. So let's go ahead and do that. We have two. And we'll put one here. And over here. As it has been that's choosing those, he would want to choose spots that are beneficial to him. Then it also has two sickles, so he can choose to do different things with that. So he's going to bump the killer's rage up by another point, and then he's going to move him up here for the second action. And then this would pass over to the next player in clockwise order to be the first player. And again, this is going to continue going on until either all the players have been eliminated and the master of ceremony wins, or if one of the players is able to make it to an exit with the two keys and, and leave by successfully passing their test. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there. I'm sure they would love to hear from you guys and answer any questions you have as well. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and I do try to make the best videos possible. So I love hearing from you guys. Let me know how I'm doing, if there's any things that I can do better, or if there's things that you want me to cover as well. Let me know in those comments. Swing by my Facebook and Twitter accounts. Let me know what you guys are doing there as well, what you're playing, what you're interested in, any of the above. Love to hear from you guys. And I hope this helps to decide if you want to back this game or not. I would recommend it. I had a good time with this one, and it definitely gave me that horror feeling, uh, like I was in a Saw movie, uh, racing around trying to solve puzzles and, and find those keys and just stay alive and away from everything else that's trying to kill me out there. So definitely recommend checking it out. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.